But hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Stephanie Prelwitz. I'm the executive director of the Green Lake Association. We are a nonprofit organization, the Lake Association, um, whose entire mission is focused on uh, protecting, restoring, and preserving Green Lake's uh, water quality. And in fact, this year we're celebrating our 70th anniversary. So we've been um, we've been at this for uh, really for, for a while. Um, but first, I want to I want to share a, a little story with you. My daughter was six months old the first time that we dipped her into Green Lake, and we call this her Green Lake baptism. And I did it because I felt so strongly that I wanted part of her identity from the very beginning to be rooted in this incredible lake. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking a lot about the lake itself, kind of its water quality, its chemical properties, but I don't want us to forget that one of the reasons that make what makes Green Lake so special is the people who use it, who build family memories around it, who, who really love it. And so the work of the Green Lake Association is a, more than about protecting Green Lake. It's about protecting the legacy of our lake that shapes our families and our, and our communities. Um, we count on Green Lake for so much. And it's important to remember, and that's what this talk is about, that Green Lake counts on us for so much too. So let's first, let me give you some basics about the lake. So Green Lake's claim to fame is that it's the deepest natural inland lake in Wisconsin. And so it is just over 7,500 acres and at its maximum depth, which is on the west side of the lake, it goes to uh, 235 feet deep. It has an average depth of about 100 feet. And we think about Lake Winnebago, which is this huge lake, it's, I think its average depth is something like 10 feet. So really an incredible lake in our backyard. And it is so deep that it's what we call a two-story fishery. So we can have warm water fish species on top and cold on the bottom. So the lake stratifies into these uh, warm and cold layers um, st starting right now, really, and, and going through fall. Uh, Green Lake is over, uh, you know, is something like 10 or 15,000 years old. So during the last, um, during the last ice age, um, uh, glaciers were moving in and out and it blocked a valley on the southwest corner of Green Lake, a deep valley um, with kind of rocks and, you know, stones and, and, and silt, a glacial moraine it's called. Um, and so the lake filled up and that was the start of Green Lake. But when we think about water quality, we don't just care about the lake itself, we really care about the entire what's called watershed. So in these varying blue shades, if you are a drop of water and you happen to land inside that area, you will eventually make your way to Green Lake. And so that includes, for example, the city of Ripon. Um, if you take, if you're headed from Fond du Lac towards Green Lake and you take, I think that's um, KK, uh, it, just over here, you're just beginning to enter the, the watershed. And then it follows pretty closely along um, Highway 73 and, and, and mostly Highway 23. Um, there are um, eight named streams in the watershed. So Silver Creek, Dakin, White Creek, Hill Creek, Spring, Roy, Wurchis, and Assembly, which is in the conference center. And there are two uh, major wetlands. One is on the east side. We call that the Silver Creek Estuary. If you're driving down County Highway A, you've got a nice view of, of the Silver Creek Estuary on one side and the lake on the other. And the second major wetland is on the southwest corner. If you're driving along a County Highway K, you'll come across the County Highway K Marsh near Dodge Memorial Park. And there is one outlet to the lake and that is right, Lisa at the chamber has a view of it. It's right in downtown Green Lake, the Puckian River. And that is the only, really besides evaporation, the only way that water leaves Green Lake. And that water flows to the Puckian River, which flows to the Fox to Lake Winnebago, and then eventually makes its way to Lake Michigan uh, near Green Bay. So uh, Green Lake is in, the, um, is in the Lake Michigan, the Great Lakes watershed. Now, interestingly, uh, we're on a continental divide because water that flows in Brandon flows the opposite way. It flows to, Lake, uh, to the Mississippi River, to the Gulf of Mexico. Um, so uh, it's a, we're in the, the headwaters of the Lake Michigan watershed. Uh, one other thing I'll, I'll note that, believe it or not, Little Green Lake is not in our watershed, despite the similarity in the name. Now, most of our watershed is agricultural. So any shade here, that, that dark blue line is that watershed boundary and anything that is mustard or yellow colored on your screen 
is agricultural, and then you'll see the little uh, red spots, which is uh, urban and, and cities. So uh, about 65% of our watershed is agricultural. And so human activity has changed Green Lake and, and not for the better. Uh, the Green Lake Dam, in fact, is one, um, uh, one uh, human device that, that has hurt water quality. Um, so that dam artificially raises the lake level by about five feet. And so those two major wetland complexes that I talked about didn't, weren't underwater before, they were just streams flowing into the lake. And now they're permanently flooded, which allows for extra access to the lake, but also means that those wetlands are kind of being forced to function in a way that mother nature didn't design. Um, other ways that human um, activity has harmed Green Lake's water quality is agriculture. Um, so of these pictures are all from Green Lake, by the way. Um, urban development, you'll see here that there was a subdivision, a house going in, poor erosion control. And so we can see um, you know, a, a sediment plume going to the lake. And that sediment is loaded with phosphorus, which is bad for the lake. I'll talk about that in a bit. Shoreline development, and as well as invasive species. So this is a carp barrier at the County Highway K Marsh. And believe it or not, our own US government, I believe it was in, in the 18, 1900s, intentionally introduced carp into many lakes uh, throughout the United States. In fact, there would, there were, I, I read recently that there was a train and any time that they would cross a bridge, they would just scoop some carp out, dump them into the water body because this was gonna be a great food source. But what the government didn't realize back then is in fact, these carp weren't native to these areas. And so they, just, they, they quickly take over and outcompete our native species and, and really we're with them forever. But so uh, with all of these human impacts, the future of our lake is, is at risk. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So I want you to think about um, the, uh, I'm gonna carry this weight loss metaphor throughout my, my presentation. Um, so our bodies are very complex and we use something as simple as the body mass index, the BMI, as a really broad indicator of the health of someone. So we, depending on your BMI, you might have a underweight, healthy weight, overweight, obese, morbidly obese. Right. And so we use these as benchmarks of quality. And, and so a very complex system is reduced to a single number. And we do the same thing for our lakes. A very complex living, breathing, natural resource is distilled to a single number called a trophic state index. And we classify those, whether it's oligotrophic, mesotrophic, eutrophic. And then lakes got so bad, we had to add another category, hypereutrophic. And so Green Lake. Um, for most of its life, going back 10, 15,000 years ago, was an oligotrophic lake. And because of human impacts, it is now a mesotrophic lake. Its water quality has degraded. And what the Green Lake Association and our partners are trying to do is stop it from becoming uh, even in worse condition, a eutrophic lake. And if, if anything, we would love to turn back the clock and make the lake in better shape than it is right now. And so that's what this, those categories look like. On the left side, you'll see an oligotrophic lake. And those, as those lakes um, experience human pressures or climate pressures, they accumulate more nutrients. And so basically they get more plants and they get greener and greener. And obviously uh, what's happening on the right here is something that we would absolutely want to avoid. I can tell that that's blue-green algae in the right picture, which is a toxic algae. It's bad for human health and pets. So if we were to go to the doctor, uh, what would be our medical condition? And I think what, what uh, uh, the, doc, the lake doctor would say is that really we're pre-diabetic. Are we in horrible shape yet? No, but we're seeing a lot of warning signs that are concerning. And if we don't get in front of them now, there's gonna be some um, really serious ramifications in the future. So some of those warning signs that we're seeing are things like high phosphorus levels, a low dissolved oxygen dead zone, which I'll talk about both of those things in just the next slide. And, and in 2014, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources said, okay, we're gonna give Green Lake an official classification as impaired to, um, to represent that its long-term water quality is not hitting the mark of where it needs to be. So if this is a fake lake, um, at the top you know, would be a boat, at the bottom, 236 feet down, this is what those high, uh, those two concerns look like. At the surface of the lake, we have high phosphorus levels. For a lake, like Green Lake, it should be at 15 micrograms per liter. This year was at 21, which is uh, for a lake like Green Lake is high. And also about 30 to 60 feet below the lake's surface, we have a low dissolved oxygen dead zone. 
Um, and so uh, fish need at least five milligrams per liter in order to be healthy and thrive. And it can get as low as 0.3 as it did in 2012. So we're very consistently falling below that five milligram per liter mark. Um, and I'm not going to talk about it at today, but in fact, the Green Lake Association is partnering with the U.S. Geological Survey, Michigan Tech, and, and other entities to try to figure out what's the cause of that. And what we know is the cause of that is phosphorus loading. So what's the big deal with phosphorus? Well, phos more phosphorus means more weeds and algae and less dissolved oxygen. So if you take one pound of phosphorus and you dump it into the lake, it will produce 500 pounds of weeds and algae. And as that, those weeds and algae decompose, which is natural, it sucks up oxygen. So if we want more oxygen or if we want fewer weeds, we need less phosphorus. Now there are other uh, concerns in Green Lake that, that we're watching and trying to better understand. Um, things like duckweed. If you live on the east side of the Green Lake or in the Silver Creek estuary, there are times when this picture is from Green Lake in the top left corner when the lake is covered in duckweed, which is a native plant but grows to nuisance levels. The last few years, we've had a lot, many reports of swimmer's itch um, in, in Green Lake, which has been uncommon for a long time. We've, it has happened in the past, but consistently has happened the last couple of years. We also have had E. coli beach advisories, um, which we haven't had for the longest time. In the last few years, we have had a handful, as well as blue-green algae blooms. Um, uh, so uh, some of the things you're seeing here, like this frothing foam or this kind of uh, cyan color here is blue-green algae. Um, and it, this is an algae that can produce toxin, toxins that are harmful to human, um, humans and pets. Uh, things like zebra mussels and other invasive species, which once they're in the lake, they're really here forever. And things like filamentous algae. So if you see um, this kind of stringy, um, algae on the bottom of the, the lake or growing up, that's filamentous algae. And in fact, there's a connection that once you get zebra mussels, you often get filamentous algae. So it's not just about the health of our lake, it's about the health of our economy. And again, both of these pictures are taken from Green Lake. You know, if this home was for sale and you went to visit it, would you want to purchase that house? 49% um, of all of Green Lake County's property valuation comes from the immediate perimeter around Green Lake, 49%. And so that is almost half of our county's tax base. And there have been studies that show that, show that water quality is tied to, um, how, to um, pr property values. And so what happens if our lake goes downhill, our property values are affected, tourism is affected, and really that then begins to dip into our um, tax base. So what happens to our schools or what happens to our infrastructure? So this is really all connected. So we're doing the right things uh, here in the Green Lake Watershed and not just the Green Lake Association, but our partners that I'll list later, but it's just not enough to make a measurable mark on Green Lake's water quality. So I want you to think about going back to this weight loss metaphor. We're used to this idea of, okay, I'm getting too much of something, too many calories, I need to cut them cut them, you know, reduce them down. I want to lose weight. And so humans, really, you've got three options. You can diet. You can prevent those calories from ever reaching your body in the first place. You can exercise. You can do things to burn it off. Or if things get really serious, you might be considering something like surgery, bariatric surgery, or, you know, to, to help with this. And those concepts carry forward to our lakes as well. Um, instead of diet, we have things like best management practices. These are, con and sometimes we call those BMPs. Those are practices on the landscape that intercept, trap phosphorus, prevent it from getting to the lake ever in the first place. We also might try to address like exercise, some problem spots within the lake itself. So you're seeing here the County Highway K Bridge, which is right near Riley's Pub. Um, and you can see that there's this phosphorus loaded plume of sediment that's dumping into the lake 24 hours a day, 365 days. A year. And so we're trying to come up with ways to address that internal problem of the lake. And finally, we're not doing this yet here in Green Lake, but there are also technological interventions that, that maybe will help us jumpstart our, our health, the lake's health. And so here's a picture in Madison, in fact, where they have a suck the muck pro project. So they're going into streams and sucking up all of this phosphorus loaded sediment from their streams. And so in the, in the mid to long term, um, we might have to think about some of the, this technology as well. But today I'm gonna really just focus on best management practices because that, that is the bread and butter of our uh, strategy, right now at least. 
So uh, one of the uh, best management practices that we employ to protect Green Lake and reduce phosphorus loading is something called stream restoration. So on the left-hand side of your um, screen is a picture of Roy Creek before. You can see this is right next to a farm field. And in it, there's hardly any buffer whatsoever. And in fact, in the foreground, zero inches between where this farmer is farming and, and Roy Creek itself. And again, all of that sediment is loaded with phosphorus. And those banks, this reminded me of like glaciers calving in, are really unstable and just crumbling into the stream itself. And so what the Green Lake Association helped fund, but through other funding sources and with our land conservation department, this is the exact same stream. And so you can see, we take that stream and we shave the banks back so that when a big rainstorm comes, this can swell up in a really healthy way and slowly go back into the stream versus just um, eroding in on itself. And so, uh, and then also we're protecting those banks uh, in this case with a buffer. So this farmer is being paid so much a year to not farm and to, to keep in grasses, a, a, a buffer um, between that farm field and the stream now to protect Green Lake and to you know, make sure that this project stays uh, looking like it is. We did something similar in Dakin Creek. Dakin Creek is one of the few trout streams that we have in the Green Lake watershed. Now, brook trout haven't, hadn't been seen in Dakin Creek since the 1950s. So this involved, this was a unique project that involved a lot of handwork, removing, physically removing whole entire trees um, from Dakin Creek to prevent erosion problems, uh, creating fish habitat. And there was some, you know, moving of dirt with big construction equipment, but this was a really, great opportunity for high school students and community members to get on the Dakin Creek and make a difference. Now on this particular project, there were other um, significant uh, parts. So on the, the left hand side of your screen, you'll see this is a culvert under Skunk Hollow uh, Road, um, Spalding Hill Bridge Road, in fact. Um, and you can put, see from this, the water level was high in this picture, and still you're seeing this bit of an artificial uh, waterfall here. This culvert was installed too, too high initially. Now, Dakin Creek, you could stand in, except that on the downstream side of this artificial waterfall, there's something like a five or six foot hole that has been eroded away. And all of that sediment is making its way to Green Lake right now. Um, students who go out and do sampling in Dakin Creek are known to jump off the culvert into that hole. It, it's so deep, it was so deep. And so what the Green Lake Association did was a fundraise a lot of money. We even got a grant from Patagonia as well as the DNR and we replaced that culvert. So you're seeing this happening right now. The culvert used to be here and this, this excavator is removed that culvert and replaced it with a bigger culvert that's sunken down. Uh, one of the reasons this is important is because it would help us establish brook trout. And so in the right uh, hand corner, you'll see what's happening is um, 970 brook trout were re-released into Dakin Creek because now uh, you know, they can't hop this waterfall. Um, and so now the, the habitat and the conditions are right um, to support them. And, and the important point about these, these brook trout is they are canaries in the cold mine. They're an indicator of Dakin Creek's water quality. If they can survive and do well, then the lake is doing well. But if they begin to have problems, this is an indicator to us, okay, there's a, there's a water quality problem in Dakin Creek. Other best management practices that we're doing to protect Green Lake are things like demonstration farms. So this is a picture of Chris Pollock. He's participating in a, a demo farm that the Green Lake Association is underwriting the cost of. Um, he's doing various practices to try to reduce his agricultural impact on Green Lake. And so um, you know, doing things like grazing uh, cattle or doing specialized equipment to inject manure into the ground versus spraying it on the surface or using things like cover crops. Um, and so these are the kind of practices that are really important uh, to, to, for, for farmers to, um, to see and look at and ask questions about to serve as a model and, and hopefully um, those practices will, will spread throughout the area. I want you to notice in this, these pictures how green it is. When you drive around the watershed right now, you're gonna see a lot of fields that look really brown and it is gonna rain a lot this week. And so I want you to think about how vulnerable that tilled ground is that doesn't have a plant on it yet. And where you see brown dirt and where you see sediment moving, what you're really seeing is phosphorus loading. So when I drive past a field right now and I see a beautiful lush green cover crop, that is what, that's what we wanna see more of in the Green Lake watershed. 
We're also doing things like field day. So for, I don't know, something like four, three, uh, four years, we've had a field day in collaboration with the Farm Bureau. So on the left-hand side, you're seeing a soil pit that we dug and Jamie Patton, who is all passion, is uh, teaching some farmers and shoreline owners about properties to look for in the soil and how what you plant on the surface affects what the ground looks like underneath. On the right hand side, you're seeing some demonstration of plowing equipment. So what does it look like really intensive plowing versus um, no, no till? All of these are practices that protect Green Lake and, and we're trying to have these field days to kind of uh, as a learning uh, opportunity so that uh, more farmers will adopt them in the Green Lake watershed. And other practices that more really that our partners are doing are things like retention ponds and grass waterways. And again, this is the diet part. So these are practices that are intercepting those phosphorus ca calories before they ever hit, hit Green Lake. And if this isn't just the Green Lake Association, oh, I wanted to point, you know, how many of these have we done? So between 2012, the Green Lake Association and really our lake management planning partners have installed over 150 best management practices in the watershed, the total price tag of over $2 million. And we're not just stopping here. We have an additional $200,000 and our partners do, so this is a sanitary district in recently approved grants. And there's another $1 million in upcoming grants in the works right now uh, as we speak. Um, and so again, these are, this is a small um, excerpt of all the partners that we're working with to, to make this possible. So this is not just the Green Lake Association. We work in close collaboration with a lot of people in the community and, and at the, steps, the local federal, um, federal level to make this happen. But despite all of that, 150 best management practice, $2 million, we have not even put a dent in Green Lake's phosphorus loading. And that is why we're concerned because we're struggling to keep up and we're struggling to make an impact. And so the time to act for Green Lake's water quality uh, is now. Now, on top of our phosphorus loss challenge, the, our phosphorus weight loss challenge that we're after here, um, Mother Nature is working against us. So this is a picture from 2008 of Green Lake. This was a historic flood. Um, I remember I was driving home. I had a different job at the time. I was driving home from Fond du Lac. I remember the tornado sirens came and I was so proud of myself because it was hailing and I pulled it just in time into uh, a bank, you know, overhead um, drive through to protect my car. I rushed home and I ran into the basement and, you know, the, again, this tornado siren was just going on. This was a historic flood. Um, people talk about standing on County Highway A and just watching what looks like chocolate milk sludge flow into Green Lake. Uh, this is described as a, a, one, a 500 year flood, uh, a flood that is so large that in theory it should happen once every 500 years. Now this is not just a one and done event. Uh, that flood has now introduced all of this phosphorus pollution into Green Lake that will be with us for for how long? I mean, you know, a drop of water, I'll, I'll talk about this later, but a drop of water is in Green Lake on average for 20 years. And so um, that sediment, which is now in the bottom of Green Lake will really just cause problems for the foreseeable future for Green Lake. So this was the June of 2008 storm and then March, 2019. And specifically, I remember this was March 14th, 2019 because it was my birthday. And I took a vacation day because I was gonna go to Evensong Spa uh, which was still open uh, at the time and get a massage. And I wanted to show up early and go into the, you know, whatever hot tub and enjoy myself. But we got this flash of hot weather after historic uh, snow. And it just, the, the flooding was like nothing I had ever seen before. And so, because the ground was still frozen, all of this rainwater just kept, runoff came whooshing into Green Lake. And in fact, this structure that you're looking at here is at the head, the, the very top of Mitchell's Glen. So if you've had the privilege of going to Mitchell's Glen, which is this amazing, you walk into Mitchell's Glen and just literally the air feels different. This is an incredible glen, a geologic feature that's in Green Lake. Um, and this water, which is, contains all sorts of pollution and sediment with it just is rushing into Green Lake. And this is a, a stormwater structure in, um, installed to, to clean stormwater and you can see it's just not going to keep up with a storm like this. And so we are seeing more intense, more frequent rain events in the Green Lake watershed and throughout the state. And the problem with those rain events is that this carries a lot of unexpected pollution to 
Green Lake. And so if you are trying to lose weight with our phosphorus diet challenge, more intense, more frequent rain events is like someone, you know, putting scoops of sugar into those calories that you are eating. You have to do more and more work to counteract that effect. And so these rainstorm events um, are, we have to do more and more to stay in the same place. And if you want a second metaphor, it's like a treadmill. Imagine if you're on a treadmill trying to keep up um, and someone keeps cranking up the dial. So these rain events are like mother nature cranking up the dial. We have to do more and more conservation practices just to stay in the same place in terms of Green Lakes water quality. And so if you were that person, your face is gonna look a little bit like uh, this man on the treadmill that, it, that um, it's exhausting. So here is our watershed moment. We need to substantially scale up our impact. Remember that we have installed, we have made historic investment as a collective, the Green Lake Association and our partners in the Green Lake watershed and we're not putting a dent in its water quality. So our watershed moment is we need to either substantially scale up our impact or we need to accept this mediocre lake quality that we have and, and understand that that water quality is gonna get worse over time. And that's not the reality that I wanna live in. And I know it's not the reality that you wanna live in either. We want a cleaner, healthier lake. So what we need is a phosphorus diet. And, and again, this is the picture of, on the left-hand side of your screen is the County Highway K Marsh. On the right-hand side is Green Lake. And you can see, this is an example of phosphorus pollution happening uh, in action here. Um, Green Lake needs a phosphorus diet. I briefly mentioned that we're working with uh, various researchers on a study to try to understand what is it gonna take to uh, improve Green Lake's water quality. Well, right now we know that on average, Green Lake receives about 20,000 pounds of phosphorus a year. So by the way, take that number, multiply it by 500, and that's how many pounds of weed and algae that we are growing in Green Lake a year. So if our, think of this as 20,000 calories a year, and if we want to hit our weight loss goals, we know now that we need to almost reduce that by 50% to 12,000 pounds of phosphorus a year to hit our, our baseline water quality goals. And so that, when I talk about our watershed moment, this is our reality. So we all have a role to play in this. This is going to involve every, think of that pie graph that I had at the beginning of the presentation about all of the different land uses in the Green Lake watershed. There are um, agriculture, um, there are shoreline development, our cities, uh, the streams, the eroding streams coming in. We all have a role to play in achieving this because imagine if you learned that you have to cut your calories in half, um, or you're gonna have serious health issues. That is what the Green Lake is facing. So it is up to us, our community and our generation to take action now. And this isn't just for the lake itself, but it's really for all of the people who love and use, uh, and use Green Lake. We asked some folks um, on, on social media just to share a picture of them of like, what is joy in Green Lake? And these are some of the submissions um, that we that we received and and I, I like to think about that this is kind of what's at stake for Green Lake it's it's not just about the water quality which is important but it's about the people who rely on uh, and, and use Green Lake and so I also think about this image this is a picture of my uh, daughter Charlotte hours after she was born so this just head head full of uh, blonde strawberry blonde hair and I think about that, that a drop of water what is in Green Lake on average for 20 years. And so 20 years from when this picture was taken, I want a cleaner, healthier lake to be there for her. And at the rate that it's going, unless we remarkably scale up what we're doing, that's not gonna be the case. But I believe that we can do this. And at the Green Lake Association, we believe that we can do this. And that's why our work is so important uh, because what we were, we were doing will shape the way that future generations can use Green Lake, can um, interact with Green Lake and build their own family memories. And so when I think about the future of Green Lake, I think about this moment here, about what Green Lake is gonna look like for our children and the future generations who are looking to us to pass on a cleaner, healthier lake. And we owe that to them. So what can you do to help? So in addition to these conservation practices that I talked about, uh, we all have a role to play and we all can make immediate changes in what we're doing to protect, uh, to protect Green Lake. So 
What does that look like? That means keeping your leaves out of the lake. The picture on the left-hand side was just sent to me yesterday by someone who saw um, a local landscaping company taking someone's leaves and blowing them from the shore right into Green Lake. Now those leaves are loaded with phosphorus. And so um, that is not something you wanna do. You wanna keep your leaves out of the lake. And these are other pictures taken from our own Green Lake of people who are using the lake as their own personal uh, trash can versus keeping that nutrient um, out, of, out of Green Lake. It also means keeping your grass clippings out of the streets and the storm drains. So again, these are pictures from our, um, from our, our watershed. Uh, this uh, on the left was just taken um, down the street from, from me. Again, those grass clippings are loaded with phosphorus. And what's gonna happen is a rainstorm is gonna come along and it's gonna encounter a storm drain uh, which looks something like this, but it's, it would be along the curb and gutter here. That, uh, and, and it's going to carry all the nutrients from that grass clippings into the storm drain. Now, those, many people think that those storm drains um, go to the wastewater treatment facility and they're cleaned, but in fact, they're not. Those are direct conduits into our rivers and streams, and in some cases, our lake. And so anything that you dump down that drain makes its way to Green Lake. So keep your grass clippings out of the streets and storm drains. And on the right here, you see girl, some Girl Scouts, our next generation of leaders, um, worked with the Green Lake Association and went around the city of Ripon and, and sprayed some reminders for folks. So, um, you know, uh, don't dump waste drains to lake um, signs around uh, storm drains. And so this is an important reminder that we're teaching our next generation, but we need to remember um, to protect Green Lake. And so Evelyn, you mentioned you were going to be raking your, working on uh, leaves right now. Keep those leaves uh, on the terrace here and out of the street um, because uh, to protect Green Lake. Something else you can do is if you happen to live on a stream or on Green Lake, uh, don't do this to your lawn. Uh, on the left hand side, you can see that this person is mowing all the way grass all the way to the lake and lots of nutrients and nice green lawn there. And that is all serving as phosphorus pollution to the lake and causing some erosion problems, which now we know eroding sediment means phosphorus, as well as uh, you know, uh, just intensive riprap on your, your shore, which what happens when you have riprap on your shore is water hits that riprap, gets extra energy, and then goes to your neighbor's property that's not riprapped and, and causes uh, erosion on your neighbor's property. So um, generally, these are the types of practices that wanna be avoided. So instead, make a shoreline buffer and turn it into something like this, which is full of native grasses or native grasses and native beautiful flowers, which are great for bees and butterflies. Um, if you ever have done yard work and, and had the pleasure of digging up grass, you know that those roots go about this deep. Uh, they are not really doing a lot um, to protect, um, to encourage water to go into the ground. But if you were to dig up um, the roots of these black eyed Susans here, you would see that you know, native flowers go 5, 10, 15, 20 feet into the ground. Those roots uh, go into the ground. And what that then encourages is when runoff from your driveway you know, flows across your yard and picks up um, all of phosphorus from your dog waste that's in your yard, it's going to encounter this big sponge here. And instead of flowing into Green Lake with all that nutrients, it's going to flow into the soil. And mother nature has gifted us soil, which is a natural cleanser for runoff. So anything that you can do to slow down water and encourage it to go into the ground instead of across uh, your grass or across your hard surfaces um, is good for water quality. Um, also, what can you do today for Green Lake? Well, limit your lawn fertilizer and don't add phosphorus. If you go to Ace Hardware and you wanna add some fertilizer for your lawn, um, you're going to see a whole aisle full of fertilizer and each of those bags will have three numbers on the front here. And those um, stand for the nutrients that are in that bag, NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. And um, that middle number should be zero, zero phosphorus because our soils are naturally rich in phosphorus. You don't need to add more. And in fact, if you add more, what's gonna happen is you know, it's almost like the yard is going to say, oh, I'm stuffed. I can't eat any more phosphorus. Blah, and it's going to just blurt it out into, um, into our, our, our rivers and our streams. Um, and we, we saw this, by the way. So several years ago, we did a, a storm, a, a yard study and took soil cores of, of 
yards across the around the lake and we took 50 samples and 49 of them had phosphorus levels that were just plenty high enough for grass there was only one out of 50 that had uh, levels of phosphorus that were low enough to maybe and phosphorus in the soil to maybe need a little bit more from fertilizer um, so you don't need to add fertilizer to your your lawn so make sure when you're purchasing it that middle number is zero I think this is the last one. I've got just a couple more here, but these are all, again, things that you know that you can do to make an impact in Green Lake's water quality. Uh, if your downspout from your yard looks like this, you can see this downspout's going down and flowing into this hard surface. What's going to happen? That runoff is going to flow down your driveway into a storm drain. You can do something as simple as just redirect it. This thing's got a nice little movable part there. Just angle it towards your yard. Again, anything you can do to keep runoff off of a hard surface and direct it towards the ground where it has a better chance to flow into the soil will mean good things for water quality. Or you can even do something like installing a rain barrel. So you can see here that this downspout is flowing into this big uh, container here, which has spigots for watering plants. Um, that's also something you can do to capture runoff uh, because more runoff means more phosphorus pollution. So let's limit our runoff. Also become a Green Lake Association member. Um, so we are a, a member funded nonprofit organization. And we are talking again about having to substantially scale up our impact in the lake. And you know, we rely on grants for some of that, but in fact, the most, um, the highest percentage of anything that we do comes from the community. And this is our lake that we need to protect. And so membership is one important way that you can support this mission of a cleaner, healthier lake. If you want to learn more, there are three opportunities coming up for you this summer. Um, one is our annual meeting that's going to be in June. That's going to be a virtual event. I'm really excited this year that we're going to feature the stories of um, uh, various folks, business community members, farmers, shoreline owners who are um, making uh, measures to, to really act on behalf of uh, Green Lake. So uh, that's, a, I think, will be a, a great way for us all to learn from each other and, and um, change our own uh, you know what we can do learn more um, second is our shine a light celebration so this will be um, our 70th anniversary our, our this is a virtual gala we had an amazing time last year and saw incredible community support for our mission and more importantly for green lake so um, august 7th be sure to uh, attend and then finally our um, our conservation field day which we've rebranded into the land and lake uh, family field day because this is about, this is more than just about farmers. It's a, it's a community activity. So last year we even had a petting zoo that you're seeing here. Uh, we had a live band over lunch and there were um, uh, trash can lid banjos and um, plunger horns there. And it was really, it was a, a, ho a hoot. So uh, it's not just an opportunity to learn, uh, but to have a good time. That's on August 21st. If you want any more details about any of these events, please head to greenlakeassociation.org. Um, so really we have an incredible lake and an incredible obligation and an incredible opportunity in front of us. And when I think about uh, where can we do it, I think about here in Green Lake. Um, we have the, the people power and the passion right here in our community to pull this off. And this isn't just my opinion. When we talk to people around the state, they say, gosh, you've got so much so many good things happening in Green Lake and so much potential. And I really believe that with my whole being. Um, and if we can't do it here, where can we do it? If not now, when, and if it's not us, who will do this? So you have a role to play. The Green Lake Association is um, honored to be a partner in that journey to protect Green Lake. So thank you so much um, for, for your time and attention uh, today. Uh, and, and I look forward to our brighter future um, on behalf of Green Lake.